Hi, welcome to In a Pickle Knitting, and this is episode 10 of the Some Bunny Loves You segments. My name is Donna. I'm coming to you from Manassas, Virginia. Today is March 31st, 2020. Welcome back if you've been joining me all these days, and thank you so much for tuning in to hear about a bunny-related craft and a bunny-related children's literature book. The craft that I have for you today is very, very simple, but it's something quite useful. I always include one anytime I have a baby shower gift to give, and this is a boo-boo bunny. Now my boo-boo bunny, these are his ears, um, does not have eyes and nose. You can uh, put little eyes here and put a nose, but um, I don't typically do that. We keep ours in the freezer. We have a couple of these in the freezer. And what they have in them is a plastic cube that is filled with water. And so by keeping this in the freezer, anytime it's needed for a cold relief to a boo-boo, it's ready. And you can apply like this to wherever is bothered, uh, been bumped or, or scraped or whatever the problem is. So... I saw this, I, I've made these before, couldn't quite remember how to do it, so I went on Pinterest and I did find a couple of different ones with ways to create them. And there was one drawing that I followed and then it just sparked my memory as to how to make them. But I'm going to put that right here so we can give credit or I can give credit again to the person who did draw the diagram, which for me is very helpful to creating it. But I'm going to show you really fast because I think I can do it. You take a washcloth, any size washcloth will do, and you sit it out and imagine a diagonal line from one corner to the other, and then roll both sides in towards that, di along, towards that diagonal line, so they're gonna meet in the middle. And of course it came undone. This is not gonna be done tightly enough. You would wanna do it tightly until you've rolled it to towards the center. So having it as a diagonal, considering this a diagonal line, roll towards the center, roll towards the center. This is the back of it. So if you'll then flip it and let the two other ends meet, these are gonna be the ears. This is your little spot right here for, which you can put in later if you want, but that's for your cube to go. At this point, bring the ears towards the back and you're going to use a hair elastic that I was sure I set right here a yellow one. Okay, hold on. Okay, I didn't find the yellow one I was looking for, but I did find another one. So we have the ears back towards the back, and we're going to take the elastic, and I wrapped these kind three times around. You might need to do more or less, depending on your elastic and the size of your washcloth. And then you can pull the ears out this way, and put your little cube right down in here. And a boo-boo bunny makes a wonderful little gift because who can't use one of these sometime? I know when I was a classroom teacher, ice was the best remedy for anything. Our nurses in the office always kept sponges, just regular kitchen sponge like this, the inexpensive type. They would wet it, place it inside the Ziploc bag, squeeze the air out and seal it up, keep them in the freezer. It's a cure for everything. Have a headache? Slap one of those on your head. Bump your elbow? Slap it on your elbow. The kids just thought they worked perfectly. So who knows? They may be uh, working just as well for the little ones with this. I know my grandson, if, if you say, do you need the boo-boo bunny? He's um, always, yes, yes, and puts it on and, you know, two seconds later, he's fine. So that's my craft for today, which is a very teeny little quick craft for you. The book that I have for you today is a very special book. It's called Rabbit and the Moon, and this is written by Douglas Wood, illustrated by Leslie Baker. And this is based on a Native American tale. And in Native American culture, at least the, the ones that um, this all derived from, which is a large grouping, a lot... Um, from up near um, in Canada and that part of the United States, but also traveling over to either you know, central part of the United States. The rabbit is often known as a trickster, but in this story, uh, not, not so much. 
this is what I would call, even though it doesn't have the title that would lead you to think that, a pourquoi tale, which is a story that explains how or why something happened. And they're often stories that are based on handed down their folklore. They've been handed down generation after generation. And these are titles you might hear um, or, or remember how chipmunk got its stripes uh, why sun and moon are or, or so, yeah sun and moon are in the sky these stories so you'll hear the question actually in the title but this one this story does answer a question in nature as well and the story is that rabbit has always had a longing to be on the moon so that he wants to be able to look down at earth from that view as he's so familiar with what it's like to be on earth he wants to be able to look down on earth so he's very determined and uses a lot of persistence to find a way to do that he thinks he can just reach out and he'll go to where the sun the moon rises in, in the evening and just reach out and and be there and of course that didn't work and then he decides to go to a taller hill and try the same thing that didn't work, so he starts asking his friends who can fly. Will you help me? Well, the eagle won't help him. He's too busy. And then the, the hawk won't help. And then he goes to other large birds, and none of them will help. The smaller birds won't help. And he really is the point at the point that he's given up. He's fairly despondent. And the crane comes along and has been watching his persistence and says, I'll take you. Meet me tomorrow night, and I'll take you. And he does. He says, grab onto my legs and hold on. And he does, but oh, it's hard, and he looks down, and he's, he's scared. So he just hangs on for dear life, and his hands are getting really tired of this. But finally, they arrive at the moon, and Crane says, look about. You're, you're here. And his hands are paws, I guess, are bleeding. And, but he's so in love with what he sees, the view of Earth down below. And he takes his paw and touches Crane's head and says, This is my gift to you for bringing me here. You're, you'll wear this red on the top of your head. And Crane feels all right then, and, but something just feels odd. And he realizes his legs have stretched out because he used to just have normally the normal length of a leg as most other birds. But now his legs, because of holding rabbit all that way, have gotten long. So this is explaining why Crane has the red patch here and the long legs. Now the crane they're describing in the story is a very endangered species. I did not check statistics, but when the book was written, and it has a 1998 publishing date, uh, te copyright date, but then there's the second edition. So I think it's the, the first date of 1998. There were 230 of these birds in the wild. So it would be interesting to, to take the time to find out what their status is at this point. But this is the lovely crane that they are riding of. And Rabbit is still in the moon. And so if you look at the moon, using a great deal of imagination, some people can see the rabbit still there enjoying looking down on earth. So this book explains how that happened. <clears throat> Therefore calling it a pork quatel. Excuse me, I'm take a little short break here to get a drink of water. Sorry for that. So I recommend this book highly, Rabbit and the Moon. It is based on traditional Native American folklore. And those are some of my favorite tales. And don't forget that I'm going to be drawing fairly soon for a winner for this set of 12 different colored mini skeins, each one approximately 10 grams. And I did find an In a Pickle Knitting Progress Keeper and a little green stitch marker too that I'm going to include in that. If you're interested and would use that for a scrappy project that you have, be sure to go to episode four and just leave a comment. It doesn't have to say anything. That's if you just say hi, thanks, whatever. <laughs> it will give you a, a space there and a number so that I can do the random generator and hopefully pull your name for this yarn. And I, I don't know exactly when I will be doing the drawing. It depends how many of these episodes I have, but most likely what I think would be the last one is when I will do, go back to episode four 
and pull somebody's name and I'll announce it then on the last episode of Somebody Loves You. And I think that's all I have for you today. Again, it's evening and I'm fairly tired. So I'm going to close off here so that I can go and do some editing on this and get it uploaded to YouTube. As always, thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>